Again, this is uh, uh, to conclude the short introduction to extreme weather and modern times uh, relating to health. Extreme weather is a very, very broad topic and IPCC is n uh, now putting out lots of uh, detailed analysis or synthesis of analysis by various scientists into its uh, assessment reports. The new one is supposed to come out in 2021, but COVID is going to delay that, I suspect. Uh, and there is also uh, uh, teams across the world, uh, coordinated by NOAA, I think, which put out annual reports on extremes of the past year. So it will come out in July now, for example, for 2020. And they make a detailed list of all the extremes in temperature, precipitation, uh, and other types of extremes uh, hap that happened in the uh, year 2020. and. Uh, how many of them can be attributed to climate change. And when you do that, you have to be very careful because often they rely on models to s look at how the probability of a certain heat wave like the one in Western US and Canada uh, was uh, uh, increased by climate change or greenhouse gas uh, warming, anthropogenic warming, uh, or how the amplitude was increased by uh, global warming. So probability of the heat wave occurring versus its amplitude. So it may be something that would have occurred anyway, but the amplitude was highly uh, uh, enhanced by global warming. So these kind of details matter. This is the KNMI uh, Dutch Meteorological Institute uh, that does this analysis in a slightly different way. So they look at uh, uh, anomalies in uh, highest daily mean temperature of the year. Uh, as a uh, global mean temperature rise, as a fraction of the global mean temperature rise, okay? So trend in temperature of the warmest day of the year as a multiple of the global mean temperature rise so that you know whether you are uh, having uh, temperatures warmer than the global uh, warming rate or lower. And uh, the main message here is of uh, these numbers obviously have to go from negative to positive because if you are looking at global warming rates, not everybody can be higher. Some regions have to be lower, right? That's how you get the global warming mean being lower than a certain place here. Okay, but you can see that there are, um, this is uh, for the whole year, so, uh, so it's not seasonally stratified in that sense and these are statistically significant at more than 90 percent confidence level if you know what that means but the main message of course is that there are lots of places where you are having uh, uh, the highest daily mean temperatures increasing faster than the global warming rate so the atmospheric dynamics, you can think of the jet stream vagaries which are potentially related to disappearance of the Arctic ice and so on and so forth. But there are also some patterns here. For example, India doesn't show much of a amplification. It's already a warm country, but still you can see that Western uh, Africa shows many patterns here, Sahara and Sahel, but not so much here. Australia, this southeast corner shows uh, high um, amplification. <clears throat> and China has a, uh, sorry, US has a very mixed pattern with uh, global warming hole, as it's called in some places, uh, which have to be understood as well. Okay, so this is uh, comp uh, complemented by looking also at the trend in lowest daily mean temperature of the year as a Multiple, uh, multiple of global mean temperature rise. Again, you can see that daily, uh, lowest daily mean temperature of the year are also increasing. Again, India remains a whole here and different uh, distributions over the US as well as um, over Europe and um, Eurasia and um, Europe. Okay, so you can see the difference here over the US the daily mean, highest daily mean temperatures are uh, increasing uh, as decreasing compared to global warming, whereas the lowest daily mean temperatures are increasing over some of these uh, Great Plains. So that has to be understood as well. But that's the breadbasket of the US, uh, and you can imagine, and there are urban centers like Chicago as well in there, okay? 
Um, precipitation is always noisier. Uh, temperature scales are larger in terms of uh, having uh, patterns that stretch over larger areas, whereas precipitation is more like popcorn. So this is trend in the logarithm of the wettest day of the year as a multiple of the global mean temperature rise. Here you are looking at how warming is affecting precipitation. There are lots of details about the thermodynamics and the circulation changes. So as you warm the air, for example, to first order you increase uh, humidity. One, one degree warming should give you 7% increase in humidity by uh, the so-called clausius clapeyron relation, but that's on the ocean where there is infinite supply of moisture. On land that can be different, uh, but nonetheless Looking at the relation between temperature increase and precipitation increase uh, is important because that tells you how warming is translating to extreme rainfall. Okay, Let's keep that in mind. Isolated station with strong trends in the map can be due to random weather, one big event in short series or factors that do not reflect reality such as coding errors and changes in observing f uh, practices. Well, the point is that rainfall is very local so it can be weather and this is done over a long period averages so you can have for example India which didn't show much in temperatures now shows very strong contrasts of negatives and positives be careful here blue colors are positive because typically pre in precipitation when rainfall increases we show it with blue colors when it goes towards drought and deficit we show it with red colors so can rainfall change so much in next to each other here blue and red that's a question that has to be understood but on land with land use soil moisture contrasts and natural terrains that can happen uh, but you can see here uh, increases uh, compared to the global uh, warming negative uh, numbers and positive numbers uh, huge mix again over the US and you can see that there is the Western issue again but it's complicated so one has to be very careful with uh, precipitation and temperature relations but this obviously directly uh, percolates into food production and health for example when precipitation increases you don't necessarily increase crop production if temperature increases so much that crops begin to wilt so there is the optimum temperature at which productivity may go up but after that productivity may drop or crop yields may drop so uh, strange combinations can uh, happen to conclude let's again look at the history of notable pandemics uh, here 1334 to 1350 black death 30 to 50 million deaths that we talked about I think I mentioned 100 million or 200 million but that is when you combine multiple centuries of uh, plagues that went on so bubonic plague originated in China spread to Europe along the trade routes but as we talked about the genetic evidence seems to indicate that it may have evolved in northeastern Africa Modern plague, 1860s to 1903, uh, was also bubonic plague originated in China. Russian flu, uh, 1889 to 90, influenza A. Uh, I won't read all the details here. The pandemic was first recorded in Russia and then spread through Europe, Asia, and reached USA, for example. Spanish flu, which is very well known, killed about 50 million. Uh, most of them died in India and it happened in the second wave so we are having multiple waves of COVID now so we have to always be careful 1856 to 1858 Asian flu that killed about uh, 2 million 1968 69 Hong Kong flu uh, again influenza A you can see different strains of it uh, Ebola outbreak 280 deaths but it's a very scary thing as well uh, HIV AIDS is still going on about 40 million deaths are attributed to HIV which is another zoonotic uh, disease that spread to humans SARS uh, so-called bird flu uh, the um, coronavirus is related to the same one 2003 a swine flu which became uh, very uh, notorious as well to, uh, in 2009 uh, 200,000 deaths, Ebola again in 2014 with 11,000 deaths. I think now there is a 
Ebola uh, vaccine if I'm not mistaken but you can look up so next time this list is updated obviously COVID uh, is going to go into this list but again just to conclude the story is climate as a multiple stressor force uh, multiplier um, human conflicts food production trades uh, riding uh, uh, on the trade routes are various vectors uh, mice, uh, fleas, mosquitoes, other diseases. Uh, in the modern times, cholera has also been spread by ballast water. Big ships, when they travel for stability, they store local water in the ballast and they release it in a port where they unload. And that often releases um, pathogens like cholera that are not local and they bring it in so South American cholera may have come from Asia for example okay so human activities are beginning to confound the climatic um, factors but in the case of modern times extreme events driven by global warming are complicating factors further so health impacts of extremes are going to be uh, critical to understand and to uh, deal with